point and go to your home. See how the time will teach us its importance. Few days back, you just requested with me to provide holidays, but in that time we are ready to do classes. But now, actually, you need classes. We are not in that stage to conduct a regular classes to you guys. So this is what the life is, my dears. This is what the importance of time is. Those who have a big dream in your life should give prime importance to time. This is because of lockdown due to Corona, right? See, the lockdown may extend in 15 days, in months, or years together. We don't know. Only the two ways to save our life from the Corona is. Firstly, the entire world should free from corona positive case. Even a single corona positive case should not be there in the world. And the second thing is vaccination. The scientists and the doctors should form as early as possible the vaccination for the corona. And I damn sure that this vaccination will be there in our chemistry. So now all students should know the importance of chemistry. See, everybody says that wash your hands with soaps, wash your hands with sanitizers many times in a day. But why? What is the reason behind that? Is the corona will kill out after washing your hands with the soaps or sanitizers? That's a very big reason behind that. Before going to know the reason, let me explain you the structure of corona. See, corona is nothing but an oil bowl which is containing a protein inside surrounded by oil bowl. And also you are well familiar that how to remove the grease or oil present on our fabric. See, oil will not interact with the water. Right? So, to remove grease or oil from the fabric, what we are doing? We are doing, we are, we are inserting soap. Soap is a best of friend for both oil and water. It may put a friendship between oil and water. In the same manner, Corona is nothing but an oil boil. In order to remove that oil boil, oil will not interact with water. So, we have to use soaps and sanitizers. What happens when we are using soap? The soap can interact with the oil and it will removed away from the water then finally the corona kills this is what the reason behind the thing that we have to wash our hands with the soap side sanitizers so by knowing the reason stay home safely and properly utilize your time this time is very crucial especially for second UC students those who have a big dreams in your life to achieve something so Let's continue our discussion where we left in our classroom to the online classes now onwards. I am ready to conduct classes through YouTube now. So this is my channel. Please like, share and subscribe it. Before going to start our actual topic, let me explain how I am dividing the sessions. See, I am dividing a particular topic in a four different sections. In first section, we are purely concentrating on the NCRT board syllabus. That means we are preparing for the board annual examination. In the second session, all previous year questions, what are all came in an annual examination that we are going to discuss, discuss in a second session. And in the third section, what about the higher portion which is really needed to crack entrance examinations like JE, NEET and KCET. Uh, regarding that particular topic, we are going to discuss it in a third section. And finally, in the fourth section, the multiple choice questions related to that particular topic, we are going to discuss. So, in my coming videos, we are going to discuss a particular topic in four different uh, sections. So, let us continue our discussion by taking polymers from classroom. Before going to start any topic, one should raise a question with yourself. Why we need to study this topic? Because science means our surroundings, our environment. That means the chapter will come and the science will also have a best application in our everyday life. Only the thing is we have to search. In the same manner, polymers also has its huge application in our everyday life. For example, the bucket what we are using, the box, wools, the cloth what we are wearing, pen, papers and vehicle ties etc, chairs, plastics, so many things what we are using in our daily life are the best examples for polymers and the proteins what we have in our body, nucleic acids, if we come to plant, starch, cellulose, these are all the best examples for 
biomolecules and these are also the best examples for polymers which are there in our body which are present in the living system so that we can't be able to live without these biomolecules therefore these molecules are also famous by the name called biopolymers so such type of huge applications of polymers we have in our day to day life so that to know the importance of polymers we have to analyze what the topic is we have to understand what the syllabus is there in our ncert let's focus on the syllabus polymers polymers followed by its definition classification and some important preparations regarding uh, polymers are there in particular topic so we are beginning with we are going to begin with the definition of polymer polymer is made by two words called poly and mers poly means many mer means units so the polymers are nothing but macro molecules of high molecular masses which are made by a smallest many number of units the smallest simplest highly reactive unit which when joined repeatedly in order to get a macro molecule of a bigger size that macro molecules are regarded as a polymers here the many units which are smaller highly reactive in nature are said to be monomers so the, this is also made by two word one is mono and the one is mer mono means one or a single mer means again unit a single unit which when join repeatedly in order to get a macro molecule that is nothing but a polymer so polymers are the macro molecules of high molecular masses which are made by the addition of monomers in a large number the macro molecules with high molecular mass as i said you can't able to imagine approximately the molecular mass of polymer will lies between 10 power 3 to 10 power 7 a unit approximately which lies from 10 power 3 to 10 power 7 u that means one mole of any polymer may equal to approximately 10 to the power 7 grams so 1000 grams that much of a molecular mass a particular one mole of any polymer has so polymer are the macro molecules which are made by simple units called monomers that means one question will arise here whether all macro molecules are polymers no all macro molecules are not said to be polymers why because in order to become a polymer it should made by a simple smallest repeated unit called a monomer for example chlorophyll is the best example for macro molecule but it is not made by a small molecules called monomers that's why chlorophyll is a macro molecule but it is not said to be a polymer at the same time polyethylene is a macro molecule as well as a polymer because it is made by a simple a smallest unit called ethene so what is the rule in order to said to be polymer is polymers are the macro molecule which should contain a repeated unit called a monomer that means we can conclude like this all polymers are macro molecules but all macro molecules may not be a polymer this is regarding polymers and the formation of the process of formation of polymers from the respective monomers is known as polymerization polymerization is a process process of formation of polymers with respect to its monomers is known as a polymerization this is regarding a definition and some important introduction regarding polymers now we'll directly move towards classification of polymer very important it is so please focus my dears it will directly ask for four marks in the annual examination if i want to set the weightage of this chapter in a board exam the chapter will comes for five marks that to only one question in part d directly one question only one question will arise if from part d in an organic section that related to five marks the five marks will be split into three plus two or it may be split into two plus two plus one whatever the pattern of question may be but the questions are two easiest questions because it is one of the easiest chapter in order to gain marks especially in the organic chemistry so then focus let us concentrate on the classification of the polymers classification of poly polymers can be classified in four different ways 
these are the ways to classify the polymers it can be classified in number of different ways we will focus on four different ways to classify the polymers first thing is classification of polymers from source that means from where it is came on the basis of that polymers are going to divide and based on structure depending upon the structure of polymer we are going to classify and third section is depending on the mode of polymerization based on polymerization how we are going to classify the polymers and finally based on molecular force so these are the four ways to classify the polymers they are based on source based on structure based on mode of polymerization and based on molecular forces based on force it's again divided into three types called natural polymers semi synthetic polymers and synthetic polymers so based on source it is divided into three types natural polymers semi synthetic polymers and synthetic polymers depending upon the structure also it is divided into three categories called linear polymers branched polymers and cross linked polymers so this is based on structure polymers are again divided into three types linear branched and cross linked and based on the reaction from which it forms from which it follows it is divided into two types one is addition polymerization and the one is condensation polymerization so depending upon the mode of polymerization we are going to divide it into a two categories addition polymers and condensation polymers so addition polymers are again divided into two types called homopolymers and copolymers based on the monomers what we are using addition polymers are again divided into two categories called homopolymers and the copolymers finally based on molecular force because molecular force is the prime importance in polymers polymers mechanical properties is completely based on molecular forces therefore depending upon the molecular force it's again divided into four different ways so the types are elastomers elastomers fibrous and thermoplastic thermoplastics and finally thermosetic plastics thermoplastics and thermosetting plastic so these are the four different types of polymers based on molecular forces this is what we said flow chart of classification of polymers copy so this is very important to memorize the concept very easily polymers are divided based on source structure mode of polymerization and molecular forces let's discuss one by one in detail okay let's discuss in detail on classification of polymer based on source already we know based on source polymers are divided into three categories natural polymers synthetic polymers and semi synthetic polymers see my dear where you have to focus in this particular topic after knowing just by seeing the heading only you can able to give a definition so more and more focus on the examples related to the classes so examples are very important keep concentration natural polymers as the name itself indicates natural polymers are the polymers obtained from the nature which is there in the nature so polymers obtained from the nature the examples best examples are as i said earlier proteins nucleic acids starch cellulose the naturally obtained rubber from trees resins these are all the examples for natural polymers these are the polymers which is obtained from the nature are said to be natural polymers what about synthetic polymers again 
Of course, it's a right synthetic polymers or the polymers which is prepared in the laboratory are simply we can say man-made polymers. All man-made polymers are synthetic polymers. We can give innumerable number of examples for synthetic polymers in our day-to-day life what we are using. Best examples are polyethylene, polypropene or polyvinyl chloride PVCs. Polyacrylonitrile pan, polymethylacrylide pan. These are all the examples for synthetic polymers. We can give so many number of examples for synthetic polymers in the coming sessions. Then coming to semi-synthetic polymers. What are semi-synthetic? Semi-synthetic. This that means these are modified form of naturally obtained polymers. We can say like this. The naturally obtained polymers are modified in the laboratory by the addition of some chemicals, external aids in order to improve the properties. So such type of polymers are said to be semi-synthetic polymers. Alternate, altered form of a natural polymers are semi-synthetic polymers. Best example, cellulose acetate. Cellulose acetate is known as rayon, rayon clutch. Already the name is famous. Cellulose nitrate. Cellulose nitrate is used in the preparation of gunpowder. That's also very much important. So these are the examples that are related to the classification of polymers based on source. Depending upon the source from which is obtained, natural, synthetic, and semi-synthetic. Now let's continue our discussion by taking a second way of classification of polymer. The polymers can be again classified based on its respective structure. So based on the structure, this is very important, keep concentrate. Based on the structure, the polymers are divided into three categories. One is linear polymer, branched polymer, and cross-linked polymer. Linear polymer, branched and cross-linked polymers are the polymers classified based on its structure. Linear polymers as the name itself said, these are linear in structure in such a way that there is no branches at all. Since there is no branches, they are linear having thread-like structure, they can arrange in a very close manner. The packing efficiency of linear polymeric chains are too tight so that because of this reason they are having high density. High density, high tensile strength, strong, toughest in manner. Why? Because, because of linear polymers having a long thread like structure. The examples for linear polymers are high density polythenes. Why I focused on high density? That's because of this reason. So many times the question is arise on the basis of the per this particular example. High density polythene is represented by HDP. High density polythene is the best example for linear polymer. Other than HDP, we can also give polyvinyl chlorides, nylons. Nylon clots are very much famous. Nylons are also having long thread like structure. Nylons are also the best example for linear polymers. We can also give polyesters are the examples for linear polymers having the long thread like structures. Coming to the branched polymers, as the name itself indicates, these are the polymers having the linear chains with some branches in it, like this. These are the polymers containing the linear chains with certain branches in that particular chain. Due to the presence of these branches, these polymers cannot able to pack in a very tight manner. There is a loose arrangement, loose packing of such type of a long chain of polymers because it contains branches. Therefore, the density of such type of polymers is low, having low density. If I want to give an example, as usual, the branch polymers examples are low dense polythenes. Lower dense polythenes can also be written as LDP. This is also 
very important. And also we can use certain other examples called glycogen which is there in our body as a food storage and amylopectin. Amylopectin is a part of starch that's also contained rather branches. Branch long chains are the best examples for branch chain polymers. Coming to cross-linked polymers, as the name itself indicates, these are the polymers having cross-linkage between the linear chains. If I give a structure, see these are the linear polymers. Linear polymers are joined together through a cross-linkage due to the presence of bifunctional or trifunctional groups in the linear chains. It has the capacity to interconnect with respect to one linear chain to other linear chain due to the possibility of forming a cross line through a covalent bond remember this, this is very important the bond cross link formed between two linear chain is the strongest covalent bond due to the presence of strong covalent bond in a linear chain these molecules forms a network like structure and we can arrange these molecules layer by layer in a very tight manner. So in order to explain the strength of these polymers, which one is more strong, which one is more strengthened in nature means cross-linked polymers are stronger in nature than that of linear polymers. Linear polymers are stronger than that of a branched polymers. Depending upon the structure, the strength will also vary, strength will also change. So if I want to give an example for cross-linked polymers, Bechylite is the very best example. Bechylite, melamine, Bechylite, melamine or ureoformaldehydrazine or formaldehydrazines are the best examples for cross-linked polymers. This is what the way of classifying polymers based on structure. Linear polymers, branch polymers and cross-linked polymers. Examples are very much important here. You have to focus more on examples while dealing with the polymers. Let us continue by taking the third way of classifying polymers based on mode of polymerization. Based on mode of polymerization, polymers as I said divided into two categories. One is additional polymers addition polymers and second one is condensation polymers. Let us discuss one by one. Addition polymers. Here the name itself indicates these are the polymers which are occurred through the addition reaction without eliminating any small molecule. That's very important. So addition reaction. In addition reaction there is no elimination of small molecule. This will occur only if the monomer contain either double bond or a triple bond. So that means the monomers containing double or triple bond is involving in the addition. Repeated addition of that particular monomers will give us a poly addition polymerization. For example, if I consider ethene, CH2 double bond. CH2, ethene is a simplest first member of alkene. If I consider this in an N number and subjected it to a polymerization, after polymerization, this double bond will broken down into two single bonds and connect with respect to the other molecules like this. And it forms an N number of a long chain that becomes ethene to polyethene. Simply, there is a breaking of double bond, it will convert it into two single bonds with respect to the other molecules. This is how the polymerization occurs without elimination of any other small numbers. Such type of polymerization will come under addition polymers. So, how to define addition polymers? Addition polymers are the polymers obtained by the addition reaction between the molecules, between the monomers having double bond or a triple bond without elimination of any smaller molecules. Addition polymers is again divided into two types. One is homopolymer and the one is copolymer. Depending upon the polymer, monomer what we are choosing, addition polymers are again divided into two categories, homopolymers and the copolymers. Homopolymers are the polymers containing only one kind of monomer like this. This is the best example for homopolymerization or homopolymers. Homopolymers means these are the polymers contain 
only one kind of monomer only one kind of monomer is involving in the addition reaction such type of polymers will comes under homo polymerization coming to co copolymerization co copolymerization is these are the addition polymers formed by two or more different monomers by taking two different monomers if any polymer is formed such type of polymers are said to be addition polymers so polythene is the best example for homo polymer if i want to give an example for copolymer bunayas bunayen are the best examples for copolymers examples for copolymerization don't worry we are going to know how the preparation of polythenes polypropenes polyvinyl chlorides these are all the examples for homo polymers bunayas and bunayen preparations are there in your text so we are going to discuss it in a depth manner in next sessions this is about addition polymerization next coming to condensation polymerization a second type of mode of polymerization is condensation polymerization condensation polymers condensation polymers means these are the polymers formed by the condensation reaction see condensation reaction which are occur due to the addition of two or more different monomers having two or more different functional groups by the elimination of small members like water alcohol hcl nh3 etc by the elimination of small members if any two monomers are linked together in order to build a macro molecule such a phenomena comes under condensation polymerization for this also we have plenty of examples to prepare if i want to give now nylon 66 dacron nylon 6 these are all comes under polyesters polyamides you can directly take polyamides all polyamides are the best examples polyesters all polyesters so nylon 66 is a polyamide dacron is an example for polyesters all are the best examples for condensation polymerization we are going to discuss the preparation in depth in the next sessions finally the last way to classify the polymers are based on molecular force based on molecular force depending on the molecular force we are dividing the polymers into four different types that is elastomers elastomers fibers and thermoplastics and thermosetting plastic let me discuss these two first because they are correlated with respect to each other coming to elastomers elastomers means the name itself indicates these are rubber like structures they have a elastic properties why elastomers having rubber like structure that the question will arises see if we consider these are the elastomers with the coils the elastomeric coil if we consider the cross linkage is there between two elastomeric lines this cross linkage intermolecular force is very weak it has a weak intermolecular force of attraction intermolecular force elastomers having very weak intermolecular force of attraction because of this weak intermolecular force if we apply a force it will stretch down elastomers will stretch down after removing that external force it will comes into its original position how it will comes into its original position is due to the presence of this cross linkage these cross linkages are responsible for that particular polymer to come back to its original position so they have stretchable properties due to a weak intermolecular force of attraction coming to fibers fibers the decomposed to polymers fibers having a long thread like structures fibers having a long thread like structures since they having a long chain of thread thread like structures they are high density in nature they having high density they having high tensile strength why because the intermolecular force of attraction is very much stronger fibers having a strong 
इंटर मोलिकुलर फोर्स ऑफ अट्रैक्शन सी द मेजर डिफरेंस बिटवीन एलास्टोमर्स एंड फाइव एलास्टोमर्स है weak into molecular force of attraction therefore it having elastic property fibers do not having a weak it having a strong into molecular force of attraction a thread like structure because of a thread like structure the packing efficiency is too high in fibers therefore it is having high density high tensile strength and strong into molecular force of attraction due to strong into molecular force fibers doesn't having elastic properties the best examples for elastomers are natural rubbers and Same thing. Bona, yen, bona, yes, neoprene are the examples for elastomers. Whereas, if I want to give example for fibers having long thread-like structure, can you remember the same definition I given to a linear polymers also? So the best examples are poly, vinyl, chlorides, and nylon. Nylon, nylon six six, nylon six. Polyesters are the best examples for fibers. This is what the difference. If they ask difference also, you have to write the difference between elastomers and the fibers. And there are two more classes based on molecular force, and also it depends on thermal properties. One is thermoplastics, and other one is thermosetting plastic. So there are two types again based on thermal behavior, thermoplastics and thermosetting plastic. Thermoplastics are the plastics which have the capacity to show softening property or which becomes fluid after heating and after cooling. Again, it will convert it into solid. So we can reuse, we can remold such type of plastic will comes under thermoplastic. We can reuse and we can remold. such type of food, plastics which shows variation on heating and cooling so which is mainly depending upon the thermal properties variation will occurs based on heating and cooling such type of plastics are thermoplastics coming to thermo setting plastic here the name itself indicates it will be set up once we prepare it will be set up for a particular temperature on heating such type of plastics on heating undergoes infusible that means we cannot able to reuse we cannot able to reuse remold reuse madike varade anta plastics are said to be thermo setting plastics and they are So this is what the main difference between thermoplastics and thermoplastic plastic. And again, these elastomers, fibers, thermosetting, and thermoplastics are mainly based on molecular forces. In polymers, molecular forces are they play a very important role depending upon the mechanical properties of the polymers. Mechanical properties like high tensile strength. the stretching property elastic property so all these properties will depends on molecular forces itself we are going to discuss it in a coming sessions how to prepare that following polymers this is about a classification of polymer if you have any doubts you can contact me through whatsapp or you can message me don't forget to like share and subscribe and remember one thing wherever you go the chemistry will follow thank you